Welcome to the Vanderbilt Institute of Nanoscale Science and Engineering Clean Room Orientation. This presentation will summarize the critical aspects of the VINCE Clean Room Safety Plan and Conduct of Operations, but it is not intended to serve as a substitute to reading and reviewing that document independently. All users are advised to maintain a copy for reference, which can be obtained by following the prompts on this screen. You will need to log in with your Vanderbilt University credentials to access the document. In order to use the cleanroom effectively, it is helpful to know a bit of cleanroom theory and operation. As the name implies, a cleanroom is a room free of particulates, such as dust, clothing fibers, or hair, that may contaminate samples or disrupt the research and development workflow. While many industries utilize cleanrooms, including the automotive and pharmaceutical industries, this orientation focuses on considerations of a semiconductor process cleanroom. In general, cleanrooms are classified by their contaminant level, measured by the total number of particulate matter within a volume of air. For instance, a class 1000 cleanroom would have up to 1000 particles of 0.5 micron or larger within a cubic foot. For reference, normal room air has about 1 million particles within that same cubic foot, so it would be classified as a class 1 million. The air quality is monitored throughout the cleanroom, which is maintained through a number of methods, primarily air filtration. The air in the cleanroom is pushed through HEPA and ALPA filters located just above the ceiling tiles of the process bays. This creates a laminar flow from the ceiling to the floor, carrying contaminants with it through the floor vents, where it will undergo further refiltration or forcing them to settle on the floor, where they can be vacuumed or tacky rolled. Due to the nature of where contaminants settle, it is advised that all work be conducted at about waist height. That is to say, while the process space is maintained within classification, the floor may not be. Any drop samples should not be considered clean. In addition to filtration, to prevent particulates entering the space when a door opens, the cleanroom is maintained at positive pressure, causing air to flow from clean to dirty. Our facility is about 10,000 square feet in a bay and chase design. This means that the process bays, where users conduct most of their work, are kept clean. Tools that service the process bays, such as pumps and chillers, are kept in the service chases that run along the walls of the bay. About half of our space is maintained as process space, while the other half serves as the utility chase as well as for storage. Most of our clean room is class 1000, including our deposition and etch bays, as well as the gowning room and main corridor. We have two lithography bays that are class 100, which are enclosed behind a sliding door and also illuminated with amber light to filter UV wavelengths. While it is also illuminated in amber light, our e-beam enclosure is class 1000. It is isolated through doors to filter acoustic and vibrational interference and preserve resolution on the electron microscope housed inside. The main source of contamination is by far the people in the space. The more active a user, the more debris they generate. For both cleanliness and safety concerns, users should work carefully and mindfully in the space. Running is not permitted in the clean room. Other sources of contamination come from the tools, media, and processes used in the cleanroom. For instance, just like a wood saw, the wafer dicing saw will generate dust as it cuts through substrates. As such, it is kept in the chase to promote clean process bays. To avoid contaminating the space, users wear cleanroom garments that contain their environment and debris. This gowning procedure, which will be covered in the facility walkthrough, includes a hairnet and face mask, a hood, coveralls that extend from your neck to the ankles and wrists, two pairs of shoe coverings, two pairs of gloves, and safety goggles. To avoid separation between the hood and the coverall, hooded sweatshirts are not to be worn in the clean room. External items, such as lanyards and backpacks, are not permitted in the clean room, nor is excessive makeup or fragrances, such as perfume or cologne. These will generate further particulate matter. Paper, cardboard, pencils, and click pens are not permitted as they all generate particulate matter. Notes may be kept in special cleanroom notebooks or digitally on laptops or phones, and pens are provided within the cleanroom. Tape should not be brought in without first discussing your needs with Vint staff. In most cases, we can provide tape needed for your process. Samples, tools, or cleanroom approved media may be brought in via plastic or metal containers so that they can be wiped down with IPA before entering although it is advised to leave clean materials on the user racks within the cleanroom to avoid contamination. As mentioned, these policies are intended to keep your environment from harming the cleanroom, not the other way around. As such, 
Closed-toed shoes and socks are required, as is a shirt that covers your entire torso. As you will primarily be using launderable cleanroom garments, shorts are permitted, although long pants are always recommended. Be aware that not all gowns may be a perfect fit. However, they do have straps to be able to adjust the size and fit accordingly. Consult Vint staff if you need assistance. In the unlikely case where you need to wear disposable cleanroom garments, be aware that long pants are required. You may provide your own safety glasses or goggles, or you may use those provided by Vince. Please ensure that you return any goggles that you borrow when you depart the facility. All items, including yourself, must be clean and dry before entering the clean room. This includes giving yourself time to cool off on a humid day or changing your shoes or clothes after coming in from the rain. If possible, consider maintaining a clean and dry change of shoes or clothes to avoid long wait times while you dry off. The National Fire Protection Association requires fire diamonds to be displayed. These signal the hazards present in a space, the levels of which are determined by the materials kept inside. For us, we are a 442 oxy no water facility, which implies high hazards are present. It is important for you to be aware of the potential hazards within the facility, although they are controlled and monitored at all times. Fire diamonds for our facility are located at the two main entrances and will be pointed out to you during the walkthrough. It is important for all users to know where these are located so that they may direct first responders in case of emergency. It is equally important for users to recognize OSHA pictograms that accompany chemicals, gases, and materials in the clean room. While many users only work with a subset of these, all users should be able to identify all hazards that are present in the clean room. Because it is a shared user space, you are likely to be around all of the listed hazards regardless of your work and being aware of the work around you is critical to safety. Tunnel vision and a lack of situational awareness are primary sources of accidents, so pay attention to everyone's work, not simply your own. More information about every chemical, including these labels and their justifications, can be found on their safety data sheets or SDSs. Hard copies of these are kept in binders and are available for user reference in the cleanroom manager's office, in pre-gown, or near the main entrance to the cleanroom. Digital copies can be found on the computers in the clean room, on the Vince website, and on manufacturers' websites. Users must be familiar with the SDSs of every chemical or material they handle or is used in their processes. In case of exposure, take the relevant SDSs with you as you seek medical attention. Because Vince must maintain several copies of these, any chemical a user plans to bring into the clean room must first be approved by Vince with ample time allotted to get SDS forms updated. Several processes require hazardous gases, which Vince provides and monitors. These gases are kept in cabinets in the HPM corridor, which will be pointed out to you on your walkthrough. Before they reach any tools, the hazardous gases first go through valve manifold boxes, or VMBs. These act as stoplights for the gases and must be activated prior to use. Contact Vince staff if your process necessitates a hazardous gas so that the appropriate VMB can be activated. All users should monitor their gas use during processes. Any concerns, such as unstable flow or pressure, should be brought to staff's attention as it may signal a need to change a cylinder. Only Vince staff may exchange cylinders. We monitor gas hazards with our Toxic Gas Monitoring System, or TGMS. A light stack that displays the current safety condition is located above the main entrance, above the HPM corridor double doors, and in the office corridor on the second floor. Users must observe a green light status before beginning work within the clean room. If any other color is observed, contact Vince staff before entering, starting, or continuing work. If Vince staff are not currently available, call the 24-hour clean room cell phone for further instruction. A white or amber light signals that users should move to the gowning room until receiving further instruction. On a blue light, users shall move to the pre-gown room while awaiting instruction. In addition to the light stack, a blue light alarm, similar to fire alarms, will trigger a blue strobe. This indicates that users should move to the pre-gown room as stated. While the fire alarm system and the TGMS are interconnected, one will not necessarily activate the other. Independent of the TGMS status, any fire alarm indicates a need to evacuate and assemble in the 25th Avenue parking garage on the second floor, which is the ground floor if entering from Highland Avenue. Leave with your gown on while you evacuate. 
You can remove it once you reach the garage and return it to Vince staff who will send it out for cleaning. It is critical that all users adhere to these instructions regarding alarm status. User activity and attendance in the cleanroom can be confirmed via sign-in computers and door access. Emergency responders will enter the cleanroom in search of any user thought to still be inside during an alarm, so check in at the assembly area and do not leave until given approval to do so. Wet chemicals create their own hazards and responses. Bulk chemicals are stored in storage cabinets in the chase and in the HPM corridor storage rooms. Working amounts of these chemicals are provided at their point of use. If a user notices or causes the supply of any chemical to become substantially reduced or emptied, they must notify Vince staff for resupply. If you cannot find the supply or are awaiting Vince staff to return, be aware that the lithography bays have pass-throughs. Through these, materials can be passed between dirty and clean spaces without necessitating gowning, and they may be used to transfer items into the bays. Be aware that both doors cannot be opened at once, so you must wait until the other door is shut before opening, and you must ensure your side closes completely as well. Notice that hydrofluoric acid is in bold on this page. This is because the response to HF exposure is slightly different than the rest of the chemicals, which we will cover shortly. Any user using chemicals must adhere to the following personal protective equipment requirements. The table on this slide indicates what PPE is required for each task, which is also listed in the safety manual discussed earlier. Face masks, aprons, gloves, and sleeves are provided and located near the acid base hoods in the cleanroom. If they are damaged or marred, do not use them and obtain fresh PPE from the user shelf, which will be pointed out on your walkthrough. In case of exposure, your first task is to inform another user of the situation and obtain their help. If the chemical is a skin irritant, like IPA or acetone, users are advised to leave the cleanroom and wash the affected area with soap and water. If the chemical is a larger hazard, users must spend 15 minutes in the emergency eyewash or safety shower. These stations are located along the main corridor as well as in the chase corridor. Be aware that any affected clothing needs to be removed to avoid further exposure. If this cannot be done without spreading the chemicals, users must cut away their clothing. After the wash, the user should seek medical attention immediately. The helper is responsible for timing the duration of the wash and obtaining as much information as possible about the incident. They should also get the relevant SDS forms from the binder, which can be taken as medical attention is sought, and a fresh gown for anyone that had to cut away their clothing. In case of spillage, Again, the first action is to call for help from another user. If the spill can be managed, the user must first put on PPE. Spill kits and absorbent blankets and barriers are located in the rear chase of the cleanroom. Place the absorbent pads on the spill, working from the outside in to contain it. When it is safe to do so, contact Vince staff so that they can help clear waste. If the spill cannot be contained or the chemical is not safe to clear, Notify all users to evacuate the cleanroom. Because the cleanroom is kept at positive pressure, any released material can create a hazard for ESB and Olin Hall. Upon exiting, pull the fire alarm to evacuate the buildings. When it is safe to do so, contact Vince to inform them of the situation. As mentioned before, the response to hydrofluoric acid is different from the rest because it reacts differently than the others. There are several HF chemicals, including buffered oxide etch or buffered HF, that are all HF in different concentrations with water. Primarily used in wafer cleaning or etching, HF is capable of dissolving many materials and is very hazardous if exposed to it. Unlike most acids that will react immediately, HF's reaction is delayed. The fluorine ions bond with the calcium that's internal, which may cause nerve damage or death. As such, we have additional precautions when handling HF, and any user that needs HF for their work must undergo HF-specific training. As with most hazardous chemicals, additional PPE is required for any HF use, and its use is limited to the acid-rated fume hoods, that is, the RCA clean hood in the etching bay and the HF hood in the rear chase. All labware that is used for HF work, including those used for rinses, must be labeled as such to avoid potential contamination. Because HF is a glass etchant, no glassware can be used with HF processes. Any chemical that is left unattended must be labeled, if you observe anything unattended and unlabeled, do not handle it yourself. Contact Vince staff for assistance. In case of HF exposure, the initial response is the same. Call for help 
remove contaminated clothing, and rinse in the safety shower or eye wash. However, you will be in the rinse for only 5 minutes. As a buddy, while you are timing the 5 minutes, obtain the calcium-based gel or eye wash from the HF first aid kits. The location of these kits will be pointed out on the walkthrough. After leaving the shower or eye wash station, use a gloved hand and liberally apply the gel or eye wash to the affected areas. As mentioned, HF is looking to react with calcium, and the gel or eye wash is intended to provide calcium so that the HF doesn't interact with the calcium inside of you. Continue use of this product while seeking medical attention, taking the SDS with you, as always. The Vince Clean Room has a strict buddy rule policy. No user shall be in the clean room without at least one other person present. All users must agree to be each other's buddies prior to beginning work, and only trained users are allowed in the clean room at any time without an approved VIN staff escort. As such, the gown room door is a no tailgating door, in that every person must scan their ID. If you are entering at the same time as another user, you must both scan your ID prior to entry. VIN staff, including tech crew, can be your buddy without prior agreement, but make sure they know you are there. There is typically a staff member present between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. During the school year, while students are on campus, the tech crew provide after-hour buddies seven days per week. These hours may vary semester to semester depending on the academic calendar. Vince staff can confirm the current availability of after-hour support. As a multi-user facility, keeping everyone informed of materials and unattended work is important. All products must be labeled, including anything decanted into smaller vessels, such as resists, to prevent cross-contamination. Please label the caps as well. Any users leaving work unattended must leave a note with the following information at a minimum. What chemicals are present and their potential hazards, who they are and how to get in touch with them, the PI of their lab, when they are leaving their work, and when they intend to return. Chemical warning forms are available in every bay, but if you cannot find one, any clean room wipe can serve for this purpose. Any unattended materials, as well as any situations where the user hasn't returned, will be disposed of by Vince staff. To stay safe, the lab must be kept clean and tidy, and all users are responsible for cleaning up after themselves. Common use tables must be cleared for others to use, sharps and used materials must be disposed of properly, shared labware shall be cleaned and returned, and samples must be cleared for common areas when the work has completed. Users may leave their materials, grouped with their lab, on the user shelves. We understand that accidents happen, so any spillage or breakage should be cleaned immediately and reported to Vint staff. Again, all users are responsible for maintaining a clean and safe environment. If you cannot clean up after yourself, your clean room access may be revoked. When disposing of materials, be sure to find the appropriate waste container. Acids and bases that are water-based can go directly into sink drains. These go through the Acid Waste Neutralization System, where they get pH balanced and returned to Nashville's sanitary sewer. However, anything that needs more treatment than that, including solvents or acids with metal particulate matter, must go into carboys. Hoods have integrated systems that accept materials that are generally used in that hood, and solid materials will go into nearby 5-gallon buckets. All of these are labeled, so make sure your waste is going into its proper location. If you have any doubts or questions, please consult Vince staff. Be aware that, unlike most labs, our glass receptacles are not cardboard boxes which would shed inside of the clean room. With any glass, seek the trash bins labeled for glass. Only glass should go into these containers. The clean room has a lot of equipment for your use, with more being added every year. While this orientation and walkthrough is necessary for access, separate tool-specific training is required for use of all tools. Please contact the Vince staff to schedule training. Once trained, independent use of the equipment is permitted, but be aware that policies or processes may change at any time. Large-scale changes may necessitate further training, so follow any prompts or messages about these tools from Vince staff. While it is our primary focus, safety is everybody's responsibility. You can do your part by labeling things clearly, following the buddy rule, paying attention to the TGMS status, and keeping things clean and tidy. It is always easier to prevent issues than it is to solve them, so ask Vince staff for assistance whenever in doubt. Any concerns, including injuries or accidents and equipment problems or process issues, must be reported to Vince staff as soon as possible. In addition to helping you receive the help you need, 
Informing us of any injury allows us to report to OSHA as necessary. As anything dumped into the sinks cycles through to Nashville's sewer system, we need to report any materials that cannot be filtered through our acid waste neutralization system. Any information about tool or inventory concerns allows us to better serve you and provide for your work. When possible, please fill out a report a problem form and submit it to a Vint staff member. These sheets are available in every bay as well as in pre gown If that is not possible, please submit all concerns via email or via the 24-hour clean room cell phone. Further contact information can be found here, as well as in the safety manual. Please note that dialing 911 from a landline phone will contact Vanderbilt's 911 system, while calls from your cell phone will contact Nashville's. The second number here will connect you with Vanderbilt's emergency system, even from your cell phone. This concludes this portion of the clean room orientation. You must now contact the Vince staff via the email below to schedule the safety walkthrough. Thank you for your attention.